because the next set of lines tell us everything we need to know about why Heartbound's code can no longer scale. What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, I was working on my motorcycle, all peaceful, when I all of a sudden received a message on Discord. That message contained a file that included a diff between Heartbound's latest release and the release prior. Now for my non-technical audience, what is a diff? A diff simply stands for difference. It's a comparison between the latest code and the code that existed before it. A diff usually shows additions and subtractions from the previous version to the new version. Why do I bring this up? Well, one of Jason's most cited reasons as to why Heartbound has been in development for the past 10 years and has been progressing at a snail's pace is that he's bottlenecked on the dialogue. When the primary bottleneck isn't code, it's actually writing. It's not the framework, it's not the code, it is the writing. The game's bottleneck isn't programming, it's writing. In light of that claim, and the recent diff that I've been sent, I want to spend the next five minutes analyzing just that. Now, don't get me wrong, writing is hard. There are plenty of prolific examples out there of authors who haven't produced a new piece of work in years. But those authors aren't working on a 2D game. Neither are those same authors spending 11 hours a day editing a configuration file and playing Minecraft on stream. They are writing and they are brainstorming. Now, if I didn't know Jason's character, the fact that he shifts goalposts, smears anyone who gives him an ounce of constructive criticism, and never takes accountability, I may have given him the benefit of the doubt here. But instead of just talking, let's actually take a look at the evidence so we can see what's really going on. Today's video sponsor is me. I built this platform called GetCracked.io, which focuses on covering everything that is not lead code related to the technical interview for languages like Python, Rust, C++. That involves concepts like language knowledge, networking, operating systems, concurrency, computer architecture, etc. As you can see, we have over 600 problems that will really test and sharpen your skill set. Check it out. Because this is a diff of production code, I won't be displaying or sharing any of it. Instead, what I've done is rename or change every method, number, file name, and variable to the point where the code contains nothing heartbound related, but whose general structure still retains that of heartbounds. In other words, the only thing that changed is the data. The code flow is the exact same. Let's take a look and see whether or not the writing really is the bottleneck. Starting from the top of the diff, changes are sorted by file name. Jason actually has decent naming for his files, and luckily for us, those that are dialogue related are all at the top of the diff. Including lines of code produced by the diff tool git, used for annotation, we have give or take around 381 lines of dialogue. The total diff size is 1780 lines. The diff actually doesn't contain the full code change, so it's possible there are more lines of dialogue that are not included here. This is actually irrelevant for my point. Once again, this is irrelevant for the point I'm about to make, because the next set of lines tell us everything we need to know about why Heartbound's code can no longer scale, and why its development has crawled at a snail's pace. Let's zoom in on the third line in the change set. Minus 13, 9, plus 13, 1164. What does this mean? It means that there were previously 9 lines of code here, starting at line 13. Now there are 1,164 lines of code here, starting at line 13. In other words, 1,151 lines of code were added. Let's take a look at these obfuscated lines. As you can see, the game makes a decision based on the upcoming step. This represents the next scene. There are around 168 case statements that follow. In other words, there are 168 potential events that can take place, each with their own upcoming step and copied and pasted code. Jason has reached the point of no return. The amount of branching out paths has become so convoluted. His endless switch statements to handle diverging paths has left him at a point where even one spelling mistake can lead you down the wrong branch, and where adding scenes is a game of copy and paste. We'll touch on important decisions that could have been made, leveraged by games like Detroit Becoming Human, that could have prevented this in just a moment. To emphasize just how much of a mess this is for the non-technical audience, imagine a ball of yarn. Before you retire that ball of yarn following your knitting session, you need to ensure that it is well put together. If you just throw the ball of yarn back into the trunk, you'll find yourself several knitting sessions later dealing with a jumbled ball of yarn, not knowing where to start or how to proceed. Jason's code is now that jumbled ball of yarn. So how do games like Detroit Becoming Human build a narrative engine on their game? They do so using a graph-based system. 
For my technical audience, this is a directed acyclic graph or DAG of states. For my non-technical audience, this is a flow diagram or behavior tree. The core game logic reads from data tables or JSON-like files that describe A, nodes, B, conditions, and C, effects, not excluding any other project-specific information that's needed. In building this decision engine, programmers don't actually write any C++ or Lua. They simply populate spreadsheets or visual editors to build new scenes and new dialogue. That way, they spend less time on the framework and more time on their creative writing. If you wrote Detroit Becoming Human with nested ifs and cases like we've seen in Jason's work, you'd explode the code base, risking a single addition breaking branches in hundreds of places. Without going into too much detail as to bore the non-technical audience, common design patterns used in narrative-based systems include 1. The observer pattern, where NPCs listen for updates propagated by other objects, changing their own internal state as a result. For example, when the Alice Rescued event is propagated, the cutscene manager triggers alternative dialogue. Another common pattern is the command pattern, where we encapsulate decisions and actions as objects. Each decision is encapsulated in a command object, making it easier to queue, undo, or replay, for example, in a flowchart. I can keep going, but I think you get the point. It's become more than obvious at this stage. The bottleneck is not writing, it's the code. That is, if Jason actually wanted to write instead of playing Minecraft or hurling insults at other creators. The thing is, I wouldn't even blame him if he just came out and said he makes more money streaming than he does developing Heartbound, and as a result, he's not interested in continuing the project. But at this stage, my opinion is that he's using Heartbound as a way to pad his resume so he can maintain the game developer moniker. Heartbound isn't done because it's not supposed to be done, both from the technical perspective, that it is impossible to complete, and the behavioral perspective, that leaving it unfinished allows him to pretend that he's working on something meaningful and important. That's just my opinion. I'll let you come to your own conclusion. I'm just here to review the code. If you like the video, consider liking and subscribing. If you want to go above and beyond, consider becoming a channel member or patron. And remember to test your own coding skills for free on getcrack.io. Thanks for watching.